Dear students, in this lecture we will study the power flow in coaxial cable. Here we use Ampere's law and electric field strength of coaxial cable which we already derived in the module 2 and pointing theorem to come to the conclusion of the, what is the expression which attributed to the, the power flow in coaxial cable. Coaxial cable is a type of electrical cable consisting of an inner conductor surrounded by a concentric conducting shield. Here, here we can see that there is an inner conductor, it is a copper conductor and it is, which is surrounded by a uh, insulator shield and it is a dielectric material. The many coaxial material cable also have a protective outer sheath or jacket. The term coaxial refer to the inner conductor and the outer shield sharing a geometric axis. So here we can see that an inner conductor, the current is flow through this conductor and this conducting medium is uh, protected with an insulated material. XLP is an example of insulating material, it's a dielectric material, porcelain, polyethylene and uh, on the outer side we can see that uh, mesh uh, insulation uh, a, a copper mesh and these type of materials are used for the communication purpose because uh, 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 the electromagnetic inter interference can we can minimize using coaxial cables and on the outer side we can see that there is a production sheet so uh, this all describe uh, the inner anatomy of a, a coaxial cable now let us move on to derive the what is the, the power flow, what is the expression of the power uh, when, when there is a current flow through the inner copper wire in a coaxial cable. So this is the, the cross section of the coaxial cable, here we can see the inner conductor, this is made of copper and, and we can see that an outer conductor, this is also made of copper, so we can see that there is a separation between an inner conductor and outer conductor. This separation is is dielectric medium. So this is the dielectric medium, and here we can see that a productive sheath on the outside, and the current is flowing through this inner copper conductor. I and this has a positive potential. And if you take the voltage of this inner conductor with reference to the, the outer conductor, there exists a voltage to take, there is exists a voltage. So this, this coaxial cable is carrying the current. So definitely there is an uh, electric field E. So this is the direction of the electric field. And since the charges are moving, the moving charge will produce a magnetic field. So around this conductor, there is a magnetic field. That is H. So now we have uh, two fields. So one is E. And a curling magnetomotive force across the conductor because the current is moving so all uh, uh, moving particle produce magnetic field that is h by looking at the figure it is very clear that so e and h are mutually perpendicular so these two vectors are mutually perpendicular so uh, uh, the previous class we studied that a vector quantity that is a pointing pointing vector which describes the power the power per the meter square power per unit area is the cross multiplication of the cross product of E and H. This is a pointing theorem. And we use this pointing theorem to uh, uh, come with an equation 
which represent what is the the power flow through the power through cable in terms of voltage and current. So this is the mission of this tutorial. Now let us come to the schematic diagram. This would be very easy to derive all kind of um, expression, mathematical expression. So it is very easy to connect the different parameters. So now here we can see that this is the inner conductor, and uh, and the and this is the blue is the uh, the dielectric medium and on the outer surface of blue. Let us take two uh, parameter A and B. A is the diameter of the um, radius of the uh, inner conductor and uh, B is the radius of the outer conductor. So both are uh, copper, uh, copper conductors. So when there is a current flow through the inner conductor, obviously there exists a two field, the magnetic field and electric field. So now let us use uh, the Ampere's law. So Ampere's law of electromagnetic is around any closed circle and axis of the cable is equal to the current enclosed. So Ampere's law states that this is H D L. So magnetic field intensity around a closed loop equal to the current enclosed. Now we are uh, integrating the, with respect to DL and now we uh, select an arbitrary point here this is an arbitrary radius the arbitrary radius is R its uh, thickness is DR so uh, this arbitrary radius is used to for, uh, for the derivation and now uh, if you take uh, the integration of DL the arbitrary uh, radius is R, so the integration of DL that is a closed path that is 2 pi R. So this becomes H 2 pi R equal to so the expression of H becomes I divided by 2 pi. Let us take it as integration number 1. Now in the module 2, we derive the expression of the electric field strength of a coaxial cable. So, E of a coaxial cable is given by V divided by the voltage. The voltage divided by R natural log of V by. So, electric field strength at this point. At this point. is e, e equal to V divided by R natural log of B by so let us take it as equation number the, uh, the pointing uh, theorem states that the P is a pointing vector it states that the power per meter square is power per unit area is is a cross product of E and H. From this expression, power equal to P cross H. Let us take for a small area dS. For a total power, we will integrate this expression. So, we will integrate this expression from from lower radius to upper radius A to B. So what is the DS here? Here we cut the arbitrary radius, the arbitrary radius into a single piece. This top of portion is 2 pi r and its the thickness is dr. So DS is 2 pi r into p. Now we substitute this there. So this expression becomes a to b e h 2 pi r d h. E cross h is e h because e and h are an orthogonal vectors. 
E and H. So E cross is this. E H. E H. Sin theta. Obviously sin theta is equal to 90. So E cross is this E H. Now we derive the expression of E. E is V divided by R natural log of B by A. Please refer module 2 to get this expression. That is multiplied with h. h equal to i divided by 2 pi r. That is again multiplied with the ds. Sorry. A ds. So this become sorry, this become dr. 2 pi r dr. So all expression is integrated from h. Here we can cancel out 2 pi r and 2 pi r and the power become the expression of power become so v into i uh, natural log of b by a okay. so we are integrating this expression with reference to d f so we can take out all this term voltage is constant and current flow is also constant and b and a all this radius is also constant so only one thing which changes is uh, our arbitrary radius so we can select arbitrary radius anywhere between B and A. So let us take arbitrary radius B by R. So let us integrate the arbitrary radius. So this become B by I natural log of V I natural log of B by A into if we integrate 1 by R so natural log of R the upper and lower limit are B and A. Let us substitute the upper and lower limit in the expression. Natural log of B minus natural log of A. This is nothing but V i natural log of B by A into natural log of b by a the common term are on both numerator and denominator side we can cancel out so the finally the power ex expression becomes v into this shows that the power flow along the cable is a product of voltage and current that is the end of this video